I'm Jan. Hey. Um, I'm new to the Drupal community. I use Drupal a bit. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm very happy to have been invited by Lewis um, to speak about open source design. And uh, yeah, I will, I will present a bit of the methods that we use in OwnCloud and how we, how we handle design in OwnCloud as a general example of an open source community doing design. So um, yeah, one of, the, one of the first things, it's kind of funny, uh, I, just, I just found it uh, the other day, is, um, whoops, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> okay, so thank you, thank you, that was it. Um, please rate the session. <laughs> no, let me see. Okay, so let's try that again. Yeah. So that's actually the, the, the funny thing I wanted to um, show. Um, we're uh, preparing um, a FOSDEM open source design dev room. And uh, we were having a discussion about the title. So uh, kind of a bike shed among designers. So it's even, it's even common among designers to argue about like what exactly it should, it should be. Like the original title was user interface design and free and open source software. And I said, ah, it should be shorter, open source design. Some people were saying good. Then some argument uh, ensued, and uh, yeah, it's just um, because, like someone also says, which is interesting because I heard that as well, well, design can be many things. Like it can also be systems design or database design. Yeah, I, I choose open source design. I hope you understand that, and um, I'll just proceed with that. I just found it funny uh, to have a bike shedding discussion with designer. Uh, yeah, that's uh, me. That's uh, last Halloween. Uh, I'm dressed up as uh, our favorite browser, if you can see that. Um, that's uh, yeah, only one of the problems in, in open source design. I mean, every, every web developer has that. But yeah, uh, I also wrote um, usability in free software. It was a, a thesis um, basically about, yeah, it was 2000, uh, 2011 I wrote it. Uh, about my experience at that time, like also working on own cloud, working on diaspora and on other open source software projects. So basically is a guide to to do testing, to do um, prototyping, to do reviews. Uh, and that's online as well. Um, and it's kind of, yeah, the, the fourth freedom of free software, freedom to use the program effectively, efficiently and satisfactorily, like the, the usability definition. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's kind of um, also a thing which um, which condenses the experience of, of open source design and tries to also help people. So if you want to uh, have a reader of the presentation to directly apply it to your project, that's probably the, the best bet. So um, as I said, I work on OwnCloud. For those of you who don't know OwnCloud, do you know OwnCloud? Who doesn't know OwnCloud? Okay, so OwnCloud is basically a free and open source alternative to Dropbox or Google Apps, right? You can have um, syncing uh, and file syncing and sharing. It's a, it's a PHP web app at the core. You, you put it on your web space as well. And uh, you can have syncing apps. You can have um, yeah, a smartphone app, a desktop app, and uh, it just syncs your files. You can sync your calendars and contacts and stuff. Yeah, so like iCloud, Google Drive, and all that stuff. And it's uh, open source, it's AGPL, um, and yeah, it's PHP, JavaScript, uh, HTML, CSS. And uh, we recently released version seven. Um, that's not version seven, that's version one. Uh, and uh, this talk basically, I, with this talk, I wanna show you how we came from this, from version one, which is from 2010, um, ending of 2010, uh, to this, which is version seven at the moment. So you have the, the file manager and uh, the, the sidebar for sorting and um, yeah, the app switcher and stuff. So I'm, I, I found that I mainly, I mainly used six rules or there were six big things or six big topics that, that, I, that I did during that time, like building own cloud. I, I, came, um, I came into the project when it was very young where it was like five people or four people and I was the first designer um, and um, so it is kind of a, um, a good example to build that from scratch. Uh, of course, when you have an existing community like Drupal, it's, it tends to be hard to do specific parts and, and to make them better when it's already a big bunch of stuff already existing, right? And the, and the cost of change is very high. But uh, many of these 
things you can also apply to Drupal. So the first thing, well, one, is design it well. It's uh, a total epiphany, I know, right? It's, uh, it's the base rule, like if you don't do anything else, then you need to design it well. Like if you're a designer, even if you're not a designer, the basic thing that you need to do with the software is design it so that it, that it works and looks nice. Right? It, it sounds strange or obvious, uh, but that's the, the basic thing uh, that you need to do if you don't do anything else. So for example, um, this is the OnCloud first run wizard in version one. You see a bunch of fields. Um, I even needed to modify it so the, uh, so the width fits on the slide, right? Because um, it, it puts the fields all the way to the left of the, of the, of the window, of the viewport. And um, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff going on here, right? A whole bunch of fields. You can set force SSL. You can set uh, enable automatic backup, date format, and stuff. All these small things that, that uh, not really everyone needs, right? So the current, the current uh, install wizard um, looks like this. It's just two fields. One is the admin user that you want, and one is the password. And it's, it's kind of deliberately in, in uh, Spanish because um, you also need to test if it works in other languages, right? It, it, an ideal interface should also work if you set it to Chinese or something, to, through cues like an input field or well, to, through input fields or buttons, which make it obvious how you need to, need to proceed through the installation or through any process, right? So I often actually set the interface to, to, to French or Chinese or Spanish or whatever. Um, also because I want to learn it a bit, uh, but I, I'm not sure that's a particularly good tactic to, to learn uh, Spanish. Um, anyway, um, so that's one thing I focused very early on, on the installation, because I think the installation is, especially with open source software, um, or with web-based open source software, is one of the most crucial parts, right? Because you need, to, you need to download it, you need to set it up on your server, you need a server in the first place. And the thing that you can't solve with this simple design stuff is uh, permissions management, for example. You always need to set permissions for, for some folder. I mean, with Drupal, it's the same, right? You need, to, you need to copy two configuration files and set the permissions and give the right permissions to one file subfolder. And uh, that you, of course, need to do as well for OwnCloud. Uh, but one thing which, which links up the, the technical and the design aspect uh, in a very nice way is uh, SQLite in this example, right? We have, um, we have SQLite support. So um, that SQLite, for those of you who don't know, it's a very simple database, just a single file. And um, yeah, you can create it on the fly from the installation. So uh, where we previously had this um, this, uh, these four fields, right, where you put in your MySQL uh, data and you need, to, you need to know what it is, you need to look it up uh, on your hosting provider and you need to copy it over and it's, it's total hassle. You don't need to do any of that here, right? Um, the, only, the only hard part is like thinking of a good username. And uh, so that's where a technical aspect plays into the design. So you also need to juggle that with, uh, with uh, developers or with the general aim of the project. You can always change it, like the, the uh, uh, thing under the input field, uh, that's a, an advanced options thing, like where you can set database options, so you can always change it, but the default is uh, the simplest. One of my favorite quotes um, to that extent is uh, by Havoc Pennington from 2002 already. Uh, he worked at Red Hat uh, in that time, and he said, um, reading dozens of GNOME and Red Hat bugs per day, I find that users ask for a preference by default. What that means is when you have a discussion on a specific feature or people aren't able to do something correctly or can't find something, uh, the solution is always that they ask, ah, but can't we make it a preference? Right? If, if there's a view uh, which is not correctly designed or laid out, then they ask for something and, and directly ask, can we at least make it a preference? But um, I really try to not fall into that trap of making preferences and making options, um, but rather design it well. And there's almost always a solution, a better design solution than just adding preference. So in that sense, I'm, I come from uh, the GNOME design school, I would say, like GNOME, you. You know GNOME, I assume, the, the, this operating system there, notorious, I would even say, for their simple design. Uh, and I really like it. Um, and um, 
yeah, so that's that's also where a lot of this was influenced by. And it might not work for for all the things, but then, like GNOME even has extensions, for example, and 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 Drupal has modules, and we have apps, and so you can always extend stuff. Uh, because the the core thing is that designers like well-designed stuff. And if you don't want to be the only designer, or if you want to have designers in your project, then you need to design it well, right? The first thing. Um, because otherwise, people are not going to, or designers are not going to look at it uh, because they like to use well-designed stuff because they're designers, they have a sense for it. And so it needs to be beautiful or, or nicely usable uh, for designers to consider contributing to it or to consider using it. And to that extent, it goes it, it goes for everyone right everyone likes well designed stuff and um, so that you basically you basically kill two birds with one stone in, in that matter so one one example of a very simple thing that you can do is the typeface so um, free is is one example of an open source typeface um, it's quite okay it's similar to Helvetica you could say um, two other ones which are pretty cool, which are more similar to um, to Frutiger or like a general text uh, text uh, typeface are Source Sans Pro and Open Sans. Uh, the right one we use in OwnCloud, for example. Um, I like uh, Typo uh, Geek Info. I tested those two against each other, and Open Sans uh, performed considerably better than than Source Sans. So if you consider a typeface, I would say Open Sans is the best one, uh, the best open source one. I would say. Right, that's, yeah, the already changing the typeface. Like, when we changed the typeface, I think we only did it with OwnCloud 7 globally. Like, before that, um, it was set by the by the operating system, right? You just had this simple rule, like, where you say, like, Helvetica, Neue, uh, Helvetica, and Arial, or whatever, and you just let the, the, the operating system choose. But that, first of all, you get, like, you get um, layout, layout differences in between browsers, between operating systems, so the best thing is to do this, the web font thing, the font face, uh, and um, and decide on one great font. I mean, for Drupal, it changes between t themes, but uh, for the default, like for the admin interface or something, um, there it's like for any project, it's very good to to decide on a on a typeface because that instantly makes it look better. Another thing is um, icons. For that, I can really recommend uh, the Noun project. Um, if you don't know that, it's just the nounproject.com, and basically what it means for every noun, uh, they have icons. Or, I mean, not for every noun, but for really many nouns, and uh, they have multiple icons for each, and you can upload your own. And there, uh, most of them are Creative Commons attribution or even public domain licensed, uh, and you can even pay to not attribute or whatever. Right? It's it's very it's a very very big library of well-designed icons, and they're all monochrome, so you can use it them pretty much anywhere. And uh, one important thing that we actually fell victim to, kind of, or, or I also, uh, I kind of forgot about the website, like uh, the project website, oncloud.org. Uh, it used to look not that, not that great for a pretty long time. Uh, now it looks really good, I think. Um, and uh, that's a general thing, like for any open source project, be it, be it a module or be it a small project, be it a bigger project, that's where people will go first when they when they want to contribute, when they want to look at your project. So that's a, a really important thing. And so um, what I found it's a lot about like in, in the in the design world or in the open source design world, there's kind of this thing um, when you're an open source developer, you have this kind of open source street credibility where you have your GitHub profile or your whatever uh, code profile and uh, people kind of look at it and they see ah they contributed to this open source library or to this to jQuery or whatever and that's kind of cool right but designers don't have that right if you contributed if you say you you contributed to to this library or 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 to that piece of software other designers are not necessarily going to be oh wow that's awesome that's, that's really cool i use that all the time they they're probably not going to even care right so i think that's a really really important thing that we need to establish this um, in the design community, like that you get a design street cred if you do cool stuff in open source. And uh, you also need to, to establish that in your own project. You need to establish a design culture. So this is, a, I think, it's a really uh, nice illustrating comic. Um, it says, uh, 
so the, the dude on the left, uh, he, he um, did his graffiti very, very neatly uh, and wrote Edward with a dot on it. Um, and he says, yeah, well, legibility and correct punctuation might not be street, but that's how I roll. So um, you need to, in the, in the yeah, wild developers, open source developers world, you need to make it cool to be exact and to be thorough and to have everything well designed. And uh, I got another great quote for that. Um, it's uh, by Bjorn Balas um, from 2011. And he said, uh, if various people work on the same interface, they will need to justify what they do, convince others why their ideas are so great. So it's all about documentation, essentially. Because um, yeah, when you, work with, when you work with anyone who doesn't know that well about design, when you, when you work with anyone who comes to the project as a new person, everything needs to be documented well, right? Just as, as you have commit messages or you have uh, uh, issue discussions on new, on new features, you need to have the same for design. So a lot of this, uh, what, what I was inspired by, comes from the GNOME Design Wiki. They do very, very thorough design plannings. They have, for every app, they first look at the existing apps. So um, what, I, say, a music player uh, they first look at the existing apps like on iOS, on Android, on, on Windows, on OS X, uh, on WebOS. WebOS is actually a, a really good example uh, that, they often, that they often take because it's well designed. And uh, they put that on the site, on the wiki page, and uh, then they, they comment on it and they put their mockups below that. And then you can see how the thought process went, what, what, they, what they went through, um, what, they, what they looked at. And uh, that's a really good example of documentation and of establishing this, um, yeah, this culture of having design be this thing that you can grasp and not not a not this ethereal thing. Oh, it's it's designed and it's it works well because it's always for a reason. And um, another thing by, by uh, that's a, that's a great uh, article by Alex Faborg of uh, Mozilla. Uh, I think he's not with Mozilla anymore. He's working at Google now. I think. Um, but uh, he wrote this article on UX Magazine about quantifying usability, basically about how you can use issue tags to to make the make the issue tracker uh, more usable or more um, more useful uh, for design contributors and also for for the whole design topic, right? So he defined these uh, 17 tags, um, all starting with UX, uh, which which yeah define a specific or which are about a specific topic. So UX feedback, the first one, very obvious. If there's feedback missing or if there's just a spinner missing, that's a UX feedback issue. So you always need to make the, the person aware, the user aware of the, the state that the, that the app is in. So I'm not going to go through them all. Um, also because I, cause I think for most projects it's kind of excessive. I mean, for the scale of, of Drupal and Mozilla, I guess might be useful or is probably useful. Um, at OwnCloud, we only use one tag. We only use the design tag. So we have about, um, I know, 1,300 open issues. Not that much from your point of view, I guess. Um, and of those, um, 160 or so are design issues. There was one, one point where uh, one developer uh, added a new issue and tagged it with usability. And I was like, nah, nah, so we're just taking design, right? I deleted it and added it to it. And he was saying, well, but it's kind of different. and where it comes back to the to the bike shedding discussion at the beginning, I don't really care. Like everything which is is um, related to front end, to design, to usability, is design. Okay, so it's it keeps it very simple. It keeps it very approachable for new people uh, to have just this single tag, and they can look at it uh, and and um, just go through the issues and see see what they what they can fix, for example. And um, yeah, that's the. That's the 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 cue of that. Uh, so we use GitHub uh, at OwnCloud. Um, yeah, I know it's closed source. It's not super awesome in that regard, but it's a really great tool. And the issue tracking is a lot of people say it's very simple, but I think it's really just right. Um, so you can you can tag the the uh, the pull requests as well, the the merge requests, and um, you see it's not only me who does these who files these issues or who fixes these issues. Um, it's it's other developers too, like those two people. They they are not designers, um, but they're also concerned. Like through the the tag being in there, they're also working on 
design, or I mean, they're also working on design, but it gets more exposure through the tag being in the issue tracker, and that's the important thing, that you are where the developers are. And yeah, just like you do, um, Drupal 8 usability, and you have the list of the usability issues. So um, what I noticed, though, is that there's like a bunch of different issue tags. Um, so uh, for me, as being like new to the community, it's very difficult to know like, hey, which is actually the, what is actually the tag or the thing that I should be looking at. Um, so that's, I mean, but probably it's a different scale because Drupal is much bigger than own cloud, but maybe something to think about. Then uh, onwards to the issues themselves. Um, we do, um, I mean, of course we have normal issues as well, like just uh, one sentence uh, people asking for a feature or something. But this is, for example, um, a design specification, basically. Um, where when I open an issue for, for a specific new feature, uh, I always write not a lot of text, but enough text to make it, to make it explanatory, and then uh, I add a mock-up. So in this case, it's just a simple marker on, on a flip chart uh, mock-up. And uh, yeah, because it's very important to, to keep, it, keep it dirty, keep it uh, fast and simple so that it doesn't seem to people like it's the thing, right? That it's the pixel perfect, um, the pixel perfect realization, like that's what it, what's it gotta be. Um, because it's always gonna be iteration uh, after iteration when you work on that. So there's like you see here, twelve participants on the on the on the right. Uh, there's a there's a whole discussion thread going on there. And yeah, those other participants are like none of those is a designer, and that's pretty cool to like to ping pong with the, with the mockups and the discussions, and that's basically how we do all design. I would say it's like uh, in or most most of the design like when there's a new thing coming up, uh, there's an issue with the spec. Another similar example is this where. It's a bit more high fidelity mockup. Uh, in this case, it's with a, with a mockup software, and um, yeah, but the thing is the same. Like there, there's text, there's mockups, uh, explanatory text, and um, yeah, that's that's the baseline always. And yeah, as a designer, you of course need to do it yourself. Like no one, or not necessarily, someone is going to ask you, "Hey, can you make me this mockup?" They're just going to go ahead with it before you can even talk to them. So you need to proactively think what, what needs mocking up and um, uh, just do the mock-up and present it to them. And they're going to be happy about it, probably. So for mock-ups, personally, I use mostly pen and paper. Um, but when it comes to these higher fidelity things, I find that it's really easier to actually use a software. I didn't use any mock-up software for a long time because it was just too much fiddling around. But if it gets a little more complicated, then that's really cool. So um, Pencil is a, is an open source uh, mock-up software. It used to be a Firefox extension. Now it's a standalone software, open source cross-platform. It's uh, pretty awesome. And so that, um, or the, the best thing about that uh, versus pen and paper is also that you can share mock-ups. So this mock-up, for example, um, was done uh, by also a developer. Uh, and this is already a, a late iteration. So it, it, was, it was looking quite differently uh, before. Um, I mean, the, 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 the mock-up is already, like you see the date from 2012, but this is a mock-up for the newsreader app in own cloud, and it pretty much looks exactly the same or, or very similar to this mock-up. Uh, luckily, through yeah, us doing the mock-ups before, we had a really clear vision of how we want it to be. And um, yeah, so the iterations beforehand are really, really important there. This is another example, um, just a, a developer uh, doing a mock-up for the mail app. Um, and uh, they uh, they even like put notes and um, yeah, it's just very cool to see, uh, yeah, them like people making mock-ups on their own and it kinda kind of bleeds off from you into into the the developer community. and then you don't need to make as much anymore yourself, right you you uh, you get a bit of the burden lifted by the others, um, and developers start to get an understanding of the design process, which is which is really valuable. And yeah, to to come back to the to the ugly mockup again, this is one of the earliest mockups uh, I did. I think probably well on a bus or something very shaky uh, for OwnCloud Contacts app, uh, but nevertheless, it's a, a pretty good representation of what actually 
happened then, right? I mean, you have the basic, you don't need to read the text, right? You, you just need the basic information architecture. And um, yeah, just, just iterate, 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 and throw it away um, and do new ones. And um, it's really important. Then uh, when you have developers at the point where, where they design and where they do these mockups, uh, then you also need to need to uh, know that that you also need to need to jump in, and then we come to the third rule, and that's designers develop. That's me hacking away on a on a treadmill. Uh, that's what I always do. You will find me at home uh, on my treadmill and with my laptop. Uh, it's very important to work out while while sitting on a laptop all the time. So uh, as you noticed before, maybe. Um, the topmost two issues, um, they were pull requests, so I also fix my own issues, or I also fix the design issues. Uh, I also do code, and I, I still do, even though we have like a, a larger community of designers, and uh, that's really important also for the street cred, because otherwise developers are just going to say, uh, they, they just like, just does the, the mock-ups and lets us know like we should do it this and like this and that. But if you actually do the code, um, then yeah, I think it's pretty much essential for any designer to be a front-ender uh, who can do uh, HTML and CSS and hopefully even a bit of JavaScript to, to make real uh, the, the stuff that they envision. And uh, another good uh, point, or really important point, also, which we also have neglected a bit before, like or one year ago, is uh, good CSS and HTML documentation. So this is the documentation of our um, of the building blocks for apps, essentially. So the the uh, HTML structure that you use, when you use that structure below, for example, for an app, you will get a sidebar and a list, uh, and it will be nicely styled by default, right? You don't need to do anything yourself. And uh, we're getting more and more of these uh, default styles in. It's kind of like uh, kind of like uh, design patterns, but it really doesn't require you to to um, yeah. It just requires you to write the correct HTML, and then that's it. Um, and that's I found that immensely helpful, right? Because it also instantly makes all the apps look um, look um, uh, similar or like out of one flow, and and that results in a very very good. Uh, user experience because uh, there's always the navigation on the left, for example, or there's always the buttons always look the same. Of course, like that's one of the basic things, and um, yeah. So the CSS for that we we just have in core, um, but each app, of course, uses the a different HTML and can override, of course. Um, and there's also some default icons set uh, which you use by just using the. Uh, a class like icon dash and then check mark or icon person or whatever. So you can easily use the icons that are that every other app use. Uh, and what I found really important is um, to be actually pair programming or pair designing um, together with the as a designer together with the developer and vice versa, uh, because that just really yeah takes the. The, the collaboration or the bleeding off of your skills uh, to the next level. It's, um, yeah, one great example, I think, is, is this here is the, um, it's again a dirty sketch. That's uh, from our desktop client. Um, I know it's, it's a bit older, um, but that's uh, the settings dialog and the blue uh, ink or the blue marker is me and the, the red marker is our desktop lead developer. Um, and of course we talked a lot, like that's not, that's not captured on the, on the board. <laughs> But the important thing is that um, you step away from the from the computer. You talk about it, about the technical limitations, about the about the design limitations, uh, and yeah, I mean design limitations being the limitation of what people can can uh, possibly can possibly uh, stomach uh, from one interface. Um, and uh, then you sit together and make mockups, discuss it, and and uh, refine it. So uh, yeah, we also we also erased a lot there. And um, on the bottom, there's like a bunch of other settings that need to be in. And then you're at the point where you're kind of thinking, well, uh, it gets a bit much for just me as a person, uh, as one designer. And uh, it's also pretty annoying, like all the time, juggling the different developers, juggling the different projects. And it just simply gets too much. So um, you need to build a team. That's rule four. That's very important to, to get any 
like to not get burnout, for example, uh, and um, to have a to have a design team so that you can keep the overview of design issues. And again, uh, one of my not anymore so favorite quotes uh, is um, by Nelson, 1990 already. Uh, the integration of software cannot be achieved by committee, where everyone has to put in their own additions. Again, it must be controlled by dictatorial artists with full say on the final cut. So um, yeah, that's basically the I would say the Steve Jobs quote or whatever. Um, if you if you um, sum it up, uh, so basically it says that yeah you need some design person at the end with a, with a deciding hand on what's going in and whatnot right be it a product manager or or a designer um, yeah but there has to be some kind of funnel uh, in a way um, I don't necessarily 100% agree with it anymore um, in the open source world as well as anywhere else. Um, also because, um, yeah, you, you can't do it as one person. So uh, this is again inspired by GNOME Design, uh, is the building of a, of a design team, or the, rather the means of building it, um, is uh, what we used as the, the first thing that is very important for us as the, the own cloud design team is our RSC channel. I mean, yeah, you're, you're gonna say, well, RSC channel for designers, that's kinda not working together, but Again, as with the issue tracker, it's like there's some some sacrifices that you gotta do as a designer working in open source. And I mean, there are non-crappy RC apps as well. Um, and it's just a really good method of communication. Like the, the, the two methods of communication, or the three methods of communication in open source projects are basi basically issue tracker, mailing lists, and RC. And don't get me started with mailing lists. They are like totally useless for any kind of productive discussion, especially on design. So we stick to the issue tracker, as I mentioned before, and the IRC channel. Like if we want to quickly communicate on something or if we want to let other people know they should look at a specific issue uh, that I think is, is really, really important. And other examples are GNOME Design. The GNOME Design channel is, um, that's what it, what it was inspired by. Um, and it's not only for designers, that's the important point. It's not only for all the designers of the projects, it's for everyone who wants advice on design as well. Because where are you gonna go when you want advice on anything design related, you're gonna go where the designers are. So it's kind of like this design round table, right? So I noticed in Drupal usability, there are only like seven people or nine people or so. So you should all get on there and help each other out. Um, because at least I think that's a really, really valuable valuable resource or a valuable channel. Um, yeah, Mozilla does it similarly on their on their um, RC channel UX, uh, and they have, yeah, similarly have discussions there. And um, yeah, th those are like the, th the three, um, or yeah, I mean, hopefully make it the, the third big one uh, on there. Uh, but like Mozilla and, and GNOME, they do it very well, and the channels are, are really cool, especially the GNOME design one. Uh, there's a bunch of people in there, I don't know, like even maybe even 100 or something uh, in a design channel for an open source project. That's pretty cool. So um, when it comes to design team, that's, for example, the, the people who are on the design team uh, at OwnCloud. Um, it's just a, um, a group on GitHub, basically, uh, on, our, on our code platform. Uh, so that enables us, um, I mean, it's useful to see who is a designer, uh, but you could do it with a list as well. But the really important thing here is, or the, the really, really useful thing that I find myself using all the time, is the functionality that you can actually refer this bunch of people uh, in an issue. I mean, it's a GitHub specific thing. Uh, probably or maybe GitLab can do similar uh, things or other issue trackers as well but you can mention the whole group. Like you can just say, you can only do that when you're in the group to prevent spam, but uh, it's it's super useful. Um, you can you mention at OwnCloud Designers, review please, uh, if you need help reviewing, because we have a two reviews review process. Um, and then people will get notified and they can look at it. Uh, so that I find really, really useful to know who the designers are and, and to be able to like bad signal style, uh, uh, just call them. Like if you need help, you just uh, uh, call the, the red phone. Uh, and then, yeah, we have um, 
just a simple design landing page. It's not that beautiful uh, or um, super awesome yet, but we're working on that. Um, it's it's a very basic um, thing. It links to the to the issue list, uh, to the like, to the design tag issues. Um, it lists the people uh, being part of the design team and um, some basic guidelines like. So for example, like why don't we use Bootstrap? Right, uh, an answer, uh, a question I've answered multiple times, uh, and uh, yeah, um, I, I, I guess you also needed to answer that at some point in the past or so. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. So uh, we don't use it, and there's reasons. Um, you can look it up there. Uh, and I mean, you also have that, right? It's the yeah, it's cut off, but um, uh, it's it's the uh, Drupal UX pages. I mean, there's multiple pages. Um, I mean, you should you should know them. If you don't know them, like go there. They're pretty cool. They have pretty detailed uh, guidelines, like for wording and all this other stuff. And um, that's also really interesting because, um, as I mentioned, the, the GNOME Design Wiki. I really like that, and I oftentimes use it for research. Like when I when I need to design something new, I just go on the GNOME Design Wiki, right? So I think it's immensely important that we in the open source community, especially. We just share this knowledge, and we and we use the knowledge that the others have published already. So um, I'm probably gonna gonna look at that as well. And I ho hopefully we're gonna build up um, a platform of our own as well. Um, so then, yeah, we when you when you when you build that team, uh, there it comes to stage five, um, where you need to go outside, and you need to teach what you learned and and share what you learned. So, like I said, um, I wrote this document, uh, and um, I try to to also work with other open source projects on making making their design better. And um, I give this talk, for example, and um, kind of stuff like that. And um, you also do that, um, like a, a blogging. Basically, I mean, it's it's groups, but uh, I have it subscribed in my feed reader as like the Drupal design blog, like what's going on in Drupal design. And uh, I myself, uh, I'm not doing too good on the blogging front, so uh, I, I need to improve there. So it's really cool to see um, you have a bunch of useful blog posts, very similar to Mozilla, for example, Mozilla UX. They often blog uh, about various topics, about crazy research stuff like India, Firefox OS user research, uh, stuff like smaller uh, open source projects can only dream about, but we can learn from it. So that's the important thing. If you have the resource, normally user research is, is done in an agency and is not shared with the public. So I think, uh, yeah, especially the, the, the research stuff that bigger projects do is, is uh, so important. And it's so important to publish and read it. And then, yeah, we had the HTML, CSS guidelines, and also design guidelines are very important, like the wording ones uh, I mentioned before, and the, all the other ones, like pattern libraries and stuff like that. Um, because basically, what you need to aim at when you're a designer, you need to make yourself obsolete, right? You need to try to imagine what would happen with this project if I weren't there anymore, um, if I would just decide to, to cancel or you know, when the bus factor comes in, right, when you're just driven over by a bus, uh, what will the project do? Um, so you need to always aim, or at least that's what I do, uh, I aim to make myself obsolete. Like any to-do I have, any design idea, I just directly put it in our issue tracker, also in the hopes of someone else doing it, of course, <laughs> but uh, mainly to, to let other people know what, the, what, the, what I'm thinking about and what the thought process is to make it more transparent. And... Uh, yeah, because it also invites new people, and uh, it's good for a whole bunch of reasons. And uh, so, to that extent, you see from the from the screenshot I showed you before on the design tag, we have a uh, yeah we do have an Internet Explorer tag, by the way, a dedicated one. That's that's really um, nice. Um, yeah, we only have two issues. Yeah, it's it's not a problem. <laughs> we we only need to support Internet Explorer eight and uh, and up. So. Yeah. Most probably, yeah, yeah. Uh, so directly below that, we have the junior job tag, um, which is just a starter tag. It's where people where people go if they want to start out. Other issue trackers have similar things. You, for example, you have the novice tag. So this is what comes up when you look for usability in novice. That's all the starter tags 
for design, right? And you need to link that very presently if that's the correct tags that I chose for it, right? Because I'm not sure if it's because there's CSS novice, HTML novice, and other novice tags as well. But that's probably correct. Anyway, uh, that's super important. And I find it really helpful to, yeah, always when people come up to you, especially designers, and they ask you, hey, I looked at Drupal or I looked at OwnCloud and I want to I wanna contribute. What, what should I do? And you always have this list of, of nice issues, nice small uh, issues to, to give them and say, hey, yeah, pick some of that. And if you need help, just let me know. So um, you're always prepared for any contributor to come in. So it's very important to keep that list up to date, to keep it nice with, nah, not with super many instructions, but only really put the issues in which are handleable by, by new people. So not just put the stuff in there that you don't want to do because it's just uh, super much footwork, um, but really uh, the, the, the cool stuff, but small parts, small CSS fixes or whatnot. So another thing um, I'm doing, or I, I want to do more as well, and I heard you're also doing uh, to, to a certain extent in Drupal, is working together with design students on uh, have them work on open source software. <coughs> so the, uh, the top one, Hochschule der Medien in German, uh, that's the university, um, the Stuttgart Media University, um, where I also studied. And um, during your studies, there was this, this project called a uh, user research methods uh, or usability engineering methods, some word like that, I don't know. Um, now we all talk about UX, so now it's probably called UX methods. And um, I noticed, so we, we got 12 methods, like usability testing, card sorting, and we could choose the project that we wanted, wanted to work on ourselves. So we could choose, um, yeah, anything. We could choose the university website or, or whatnot. And, a lot of people, they actually chose Facebook, MSN, AIM, stuff like that, like where the reviews are not going to go to Facebook or not going to go to MSN or no one's going to be interested anyway and it's going to be a piece for the portfolio and nothing more. So I just talked to my professor and asked him, hey, um, when, I, when I was finished, um, hey, in the next semester, can I just come over and present like three open source projects? And I just presented uh, own cloud, um, Media Goblin, which is like an open source media hosting solution, and Couch, not Couch Surfing, Be Welcome, which is an open source Couch Surfing. And um, because I also had uh, ties or I knew the people in these projects, I just quickly presented them. And uh, half of the students actually ended up working on these projects. And yeah, for example, the usability testing group worked on own cloud, and that was really super valuable because, especially in open source projects, you have no time or very little time, especially if you're one person, to do proper usability testing. But um, yeah, the design students, they have time, they will get the right tools, and you just also sit there and can mentor them and learn something as well. And uh, the Mertz Academy uh, is a, se a second thing. It's a, a design academy, also in Stuttgart, um, which uh, where I was uh, last year for a week. Um, where where it was just working with the students on concepts on design concepts, and uh, generally working on open source. So I we went that far that we we introduced them to the issue tracker. They did mockups. They did uh, concepts like these things I showed you before the issue discussions, and we even had some some CSS and and JavaScript and HTML fixes in. So during one week, uh, I think that's that's really cool with students which had no open source, um, open source experience before that. And so, yeah, I want to do more of that. If you know anything or if you already do that, please let's talk about it. Um, because I think that really should be a thing, open source and design students, because it just really fits kind of perfectly. So then we come to the last step. Um, now that there's more and more design-focused open source projects, I mean, especially in recent years with the NSA stuff and um, people being concerned about privacy, there's uh, yeah, more and more projects, more and more well-designed projects. But then it comes to the point where it gets this kind of startup vibe, right? You, you start to get just get the startup mentality into the open source world, but um, you need to collaborate, actually. That's That's... Rule six, you need to integrate and collaborate with other projects and um, look at how you, how you can do it. Because otherwise, you're going to have decentralization, but it's going to be monopolies after all, right? You have these 
all these different decentralized instances. I mean, especially with with social networks, like there's like, how many are there? 10, 15 decentralized social networks? And only a few of them really interconnect um, among uh, or across, across them. So uh, that's really something that I, that I don't understand about open source uh, social networks is that they're really monopolies after all. So um, we need to really make sure to, to uh, collaborate and integrate with other projects because also that's one of the important, one of the important points that we have um, as an advantage over closed source projects because closed source projects are way less likely to collaborate with each other or, or communicate with each other uh, less likely even to collaborate with with open source projects and um, so yeah we can link up everything because yeah no one is just using one thing no one is just using apple products they're using websites or web platforms no one is only using uh, drupal no one is only using own cloud no one is only using firefox right so uh, we really need to need to plug them together because yeah the user experience that everyone talks about it goes beyond any single project. So if you're talking about a good user experience for a project, you need to talk beyond one single project, and yeah, especially in, in open source. So um, we have some efforts to, to, to that extent, like um, we use WebDAV, CalDAV, and CarDAV as open standards for file, uh, calendar, and, and uh, contacts syncing. So there's a bunch of apps which can already integrate then we have some more thoughts on like a specific share API, um, using like these uh, cross cross origin resource sharing um, mechanisms. That it's a mechanism that other web apps, other JavaScript web apps, can can plug into that side, and a whole bunch of other stuff, um, which also results in in um, like below the tech talk. Um, it results in stuff like these easy save to Dropbox and choose from Dropbox buttons. You probably saw at some point, or sign in with Google, sign in with GitHub, all this stuff. So I, I really think that, that open protocols, that's again, to come back to the start as well, uh, where SQLite or, or MySQL, uh, the decision really, really um, influences the, the experience, is that when you use an open protocol, in the end, it's better for the user experience, because you can choose the, the clients, you can, you can integrate with many more projects with less work, because they're already supporting it. So it makes for a better user experience. So we're, for example, integrating with GNOME online accounts. GNOME online accounts is this great system in GNOME where you can just plug in different accounts. You can, of course, also plug in uh, Facebook and Google and um, Yahoo, and it will sync calendar, contacts, files, and all these different things. And uh, that's, for example, a really awesome effort by, by GNOME. Uh, and yeah, I mean, now there's, there's also other systems doing it. Um, but but really, that's a, a very one of the most polished solutions I've seen, like anywhere, not only in open source. And also uh, for MailPile, okay, let's again cut off. Sorry, uh, but MailPile is a, is an open source email app which is focused on bringing usable encrypted email, uh, and they also have this thread about an, a possible own cloud plugin uh, where you can pick files, for example, right? You could could pick attachments or you could save attachments to your own cloud. And that's, I, I think, yeah, it, it's a way better than trying to build everything yourself, not integrate with anything else, because then we're going to end up with all these separate apps again, and that's kind of not the point. And there's a whole bunch of other initiatives. Uh, I'm not going to go super deep into that. There's the called open source design. It's pretty cool. A lot of blog posts. Then there's a, a GitHub group that we're doing open source designers. Um, so I'm going to add you folks to it. Uh, it's just a loose organization, and we're trying to put some resources, some patterns, some useful blog posts, and just get some kind of organization in it, or try to communicate more. I mean, um, yeah, at least, or already, like, being at this conference is very interesting, like, exchanging with you, how you do design, and I think that's very important. Uh, there's also a bunch of conferences going on. This was already in the past, but it was, I still mention it because it was, it was, mainly like many technology people coming, but it was also very design focused uh, in a way that people should collaborate and that, that we shared ideas a lot. It was a, it was a bar camp style organization. At the OwnCloud Contributor Conference last year, we also invited uh, some, some people from other projects 
which are similar. Then there's an upcoming conference in Nuremberg, which is very similar to the decentralized camp. Um, and there's uh, an awesome thing going on, and we want to organize it for FOSDEM. You probably all know FOSDEM, the uh, Free and Open Source Developers European Meeting. Uh, open source people have a have a thing for abbreviations. I hate that, but uh, it's a huge European uh, open source conference. You probably know about it, but we're organizing a design dev room for it. So a whole track for open source designers, and uh, we're pulling a whole bunch of people in. So if you don't know about it yet, please talk to me and attend, or I mean, we will know tomorrow if it will be accepted, because tomorrow is the, the announcement deadline, and uh, then we'll see if we all meet at FOSDEM. And yeah, of course you. Uh, thanks again for inviting me, because uh, yeah, I think it's really, really important to exchange, to have this, this exchange be between the open source projects. And I think in the end, uh, everything is pretty much awesome and it's going going in a really good direction. And if you've s not seen the Lego movie so far, you should definitely do it because it's it's the best movie this year, I would say. Um, maybe even this decade. <laughs> so uh, yeah, to, to sum it up, uh, the first obvious rule, design it well. If you're just alone and if you're not even a designer, Try to design it well. Try to read design blog posts and stuff. Try to look up the, the what other projects are doing. Um, there's a lot of resources out there, as I as I presented. Uh, then try to build a design culture in your own project. If you're a sole designer, or if you're not even a designer, right? It goes for anyone. And then make sure that you're also uh, yeah go into the trenches and do the actual work because that will that will make you credible and uh, yeah give you design street cred among developers. Then you need to build a team to make it feasible for yourself and to not die of exhaustion. And then you need to teach and share and get even more people in, some students or other people. And then you need to work together with other projects. I mean, you probably should even work together with other projects at an earlier stage. It's, it's, uh, it's parallel, not um, steps after each other. And that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you. Any yeah. Any questions? Hey, um, I'd really like to hear some tips from you about um, how to encourage developers to also get involved in the design process, because I think that's really mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, so that's basically what the, the, um, the design culture thing is about, right? You, when, you, when you communicate it in a way that it's, that it's in the issue tracker or in the, on the developer's turf, so to say, people are going to get involved with it sooner or later, right? People see, or developers see, that there's design activity going on, and there's, I mean, they will also be, need to be involved in it anyway, because oftentimes the design, or most of the time, design and development decisions, they overlap. So at a certain point, um, it just, when you, when you also do it enough, and when you talk to the developers, they will get involved eventually, right? I mean, when you use all the, the, the methods and when you ha like, I really, I really think this this IRC channel thing, for example, is really good to to get people kind of sucked in and to. I mean, if you just if you just uh, are idling in the channel, and just you you um, notice the discussions and you can just read through what the designers talk about, it's also something that, as a developer, I guess, helps get you started. Um, thanks. Um, yeah. I already we already spoke about this last night, I think, yeah. but. Um, just in case anyone else is curious, um, how, what percentage of uh, contributors to OnCloud are paid contributors? Right, so um, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, code contributors, uh, so there's, I think, 10 full-time or 15 full-time contributors. And there's, I think, every month, I don't know, 200 contributors or 300. I, I don't have the exact number. But um, yeah, that's around the, the thing. 
I mean, of course, the, the paid contributors can do it full time, so they can be a bit more focused on it. But uh, yeah, in general, it's uh, it's from the from the um, people working on it. There's way more um, volunteers working on it than paid. Yeah. Thanks. Does anyone else have any questions? <laughs> you can take it out if you want. Um, so I think the biggest, the there's a lot of really good stuff in here. I think the one that I take the most issue with is the idea that designers need to code mm -hmm. in order to gain street cred with the developers. Um, mm -hmm. I know that there are many of us, um, specifically who work in Drupal, who we're not really coders and we're not going to be. Um, mm -hmm. But we know how to talk to the coders, and we know how to communicate our de our ideas effectively in order to get the developers on our side. Yeah. So I would probably amend number three to say you have to be able to speak the language right. of the people who have yeah. to actually implement what you're designing. Yeah. Um, there are a number of designers I see who you know want to sort of charge in and rant and change things, and I certainly count myself as one of those designers <laughs> back in 2009 or whatever it was when I joined the community. Yeah, oh man, well, you know, I go on rampages. Um, but I think the, the big thing in any community of this size where so many people are putting in their off hours in most cases, just to make this product better is sort of respecting that all of us are doing this in our free time. Yeah. And I think that's a big sort of message from all of this. Right, so yeah, I probably need to like um, uh, reduce it a bit or, or the point, make the point a bit more clear that in that it's really, I mean the intention is that you can speak the language mm -hmm. of, the, of the developers and you're on the same page and you know what is what it's possible. And I think it also varies between the projects, right? If you if you have a project like Drupal, a big one, then it really isn't possible to to yeah for every designer to be a coder as well. Mm -hmm. um, for a smaller project, it's definitely possible, I would say, or it's necessary even. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a very good point. Um, yeah. Well, and I also think that one of the things that you demonstrated very well there, and I, I really liked the way that you guys have it set up in own in um, own cloud is just the way that you show design issues evolve in the bug in the bug tracker. I think mm -hmm. there's a lot that we in the Drupal project can take from that. I think there's bits and pieces of what we're trying to do, mm -hmm. um, but I think we could probably refine that process as we move forward and continue building a design culture within Drupal. So yeah. thank you very much for demonstrating that. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Or remarks, or if no one else has any questions, I just wanted to say that um, I asked um, Jan to come speak because I think it's really important to get um, perspective outside the Drupal community and um, you know get new insight and new ideas, and um, that's really hard to do as a as a track chair because you can't afford to compensate because um, the DA doesn't the, the DA doesn't give you any money to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got a lot of rude responses, um, a lot of uh, don't you know who I am kind of stuff like that. But Jan was so humble and he was so enthusiastic about coming and sharing and you know collaborating with the community that I thought it was just awesome. Uh, and he paid, you know, he paid his own train to get here and he's staying on a friend's couch or something like that um, to be here. So I just thought if you see him around, just uh, just buy him a drink or something this evening. I think you're around to. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> I think you're around till tomorrow, right? I think. Yeah, yeah. Um. Thank you. Yeah, I'm around until tomorrow, probably 12 or so. My train goes at 1. So if you want to talk to me. Uh, no, plenty of chance to drink beer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> this evening. And yeah, oh yeah, and, and please rate the session. I'm supposed to say that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and thank you again. Yeah, that's it. Oh, and I have stickers if you want some, <laughs> some own cloud stickers. I know you want them.